In this video, I'm designing a t-shirt for a band called Bush. And thanks to my good friends over at Applique, we can now see today's design printed on a t-shirt. That is right. Applique is the only print-on-demand company you need. Their unique private labeling and no monthly fees sets them apart from the rest. And did I mention Applique integrates with your favorite e-commerce platforms such as Shopify, Etsy, and more. Setup only takes a few minutes and you can get started selling custom merch in no time. Sign up today using the link in the description below. You guys know what time it is. Open up Photoshop and let's begin. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff. Welcome back to another tutorial, guys. Uh, this one's kind of exciting. I really love this band, Bush. I just saw them in concert. I think it was like a week and a half, two weeks ago, and they were great. And um, I mean, the guy, Gavin, his the front man, he's almost like 60 years old and he's killing it still. So I'm, I'm honestly kind of shocked by him. His stage presence was insane. But uh, enough about that. Um, this is going to be a crazy design. We're doing some color separations. As you can see, I'm putting together all of these different assets in order to even make this design possible. You always wanna start off with really good assets before moving into the design process or else you're going to be like me and start designing and find out, wait a minute, this isn't working out. So you don't wanna be like that, okay? Don't be me, be the opposite, <laughs> be a better me. Um, I'm looking for their logo just because I, I still want to keep the integrity of the band intact and i couldn't help myself of course i'm a wild animal and i just kept downloading photo after photo after photo and it wouldn't stop all right i'm done messing around probably not though we'll see how the video plays out here but uh yeah so let's talk about their new album it just came out in 2022 the end of 2022 i think it was like actually december i could be wrong but uh it's called the art of survival and it's a great album listen to it if you guys like rock music i mean it's great uh but the song that i wanted to make a design for was called more than machines which is i believe their um, i want to say their single that they released um but yeah it's a really good song too and I don't know. It says more than machines, right? That's the title. So I was thinking maybe Gavin's a machine. I don't know the real meaning behind it, but I was like, you know what? What if he had like some sort of like computer chip in his hand, gears, making him look like this machine that he is, right? And I'm going to waste no time admitting that I couldn't find the damn asset that I wanted to use for this. I, I just couldn't find something that was cool enough to fit in there. And I ended up going back to my original spot, which is unsplash.com. Man, I use that website too much. But back up a little bit. I'm going way too far ahead. Um, I needed lyrics from the actual song More Than Machine. So I'm on Google here typing in More Than Machine lyrics, okay? And I found them easy to find obviously and i just picked my favorite line it's simple as that and i cheated a little bit guys i'm not gonna lie i used click magic to cut out my images i did not feel like doing it manually okay i'm lazy sometimes i'm not gonna lie and i didn't want to deal with it so i'm placing the image that i had cut out with click magic it's actually a great website it works better than adobe sensei to be honest with you but yeah it's already cut out i'm just positioning my graphics where, or not graphics, but my photos where I think they look good. And obviously his hand kind of going over his head uh, or like kind of passing his jawline, I like that. So I made that the center point. And then I have the actual band photo below that. But there's one thing I kind of noticed that I didn't like, and that's that Gavin appears twice. I don't like that, it's weird. But at the same time, if you think about it, what if Gavin on the top is a different version of him at the bottom? So there could be some like, you know, uh, I don't know, lore there, if you will. Um, and obviously at the top, maybe he's a machine and at the bottom, he's not, he's his human self. So that's a cool way to look at it. I'm just saying that right now, honestly, to make myself look better because I made a shitty decision. But uh, <laughs> you guys, you know, let me know in the comments what you think. Right now I'm just using the marquee tool and then I'm pressing command T on my keyboard to bring up my transform options. And if you uncheck the chain at the very top, you could just literally stretch things using that marquee tool. It's super cool. And that's what I did to the bottom of the uh, top Gavin, we'll call him, um, to stretch out the body there. So that's what I did there. And then I'm obviously just desaturating every image that I have because I decided to just use gradient maps to color this image. I didn't wanna work with their natural skin tones and I already knew that going into it. That's the reason for me desaturating the images. So as of, as of right now, we're starting pretty 
you know, we're starting off at a good baseline um, and I'm going to be able to work with this now. Now it's time to import their band logo. I already had that in a uh, file on my computer, so I just dragged it into place and, you know, the rest is history. I wish it was that simple, but in all honesty, it's not, so it's okay. But uh, you know what I noticed? Their band logo was really um, just blurry. So I ended up using levels to bring back some of that detail and then I just like paintbrushed it or not paintbrush. What am I saying? I used the uh, uh, magic wand tool to cut the black out of the white. That way I'm just left with the, the logo. Oh, and his hand still bare. So there's that. I need to fix that. So where do we go? <laughs> we go to unsplash.com looking for some damn image that will that will fix my issue here. Uh, well, honestly, I, I was thinking, you know, he's a machine. And I, I don't know what I was doing here because like when I thought machine initially, I was thinking like electrical parts, right? But I, I don't really know if that's like, that's more AI, right? Like robotic. So I was like, man, maybe I need actual gears. Um, uh, nothing I was doing was making sense at this point, but uh, I knew that I needed some image to uh, to solve my problems, like I said. So uh Unsplash was it, man. I, I just kept looking and looking and I finally landed on this image right here. What intrigued me about this image wasn't the volts because obviously that's not going to work. Uh, the shape of it, I love the shape of it. And I was thinking, you know, on the top of his hand, it would actually look really good. So I ended up just using that image for the shape and I found gears later on. So it kind of just like it semi solved my problem, but not really, basically. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I didn't want to just not use this image though, because I really did like it. So you'll see what I'm doing right now. I'm just, I'm going to start blending it into the uh, actual hand. First, I need to actually cut it out. So I'm just using the polygonal lasso tool, of course. It's one of my favorite tools, honestly. I don't think people use it enough. I know there's uh, designers out there that are probably like, damn, Charlie, you suck. What are you doing? Use the pen tool, damn it. But, uh, or the magnetic lasso tool. But I love this one. It, it works for me. I did like a sort of rough vanishing point warp just to kind of put it on the hand and see what it would look like first. And then I ended up rewarping it because I didn't like it. One thing you could do is just press command or control T on your keyboard. And then, um, you know, use perspective warps. You can right click on the image. Um, once you hover over the actual image, you can right click on it, uh, select warp, and you can do all your warps that way as well. Vanishing point uh, warp works really, really well. And there's a ton of YouTube videos on it and uh, tutorials on it, I mean. And um, I recommend you guys get really familiar with it. But that's what I use for that. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm rasterizing the layer so I can desaturate it. You can also use a hue and saturation adjustment layer, but I decided to do it this way. I don't know why. Um, and then after that, I just basically messed with the, um, I don't know what I'm doing right here. I'll be honest with you guys. <laughs> I deleted that. See, I tried to do the hue and saturation after I already desaturated it. But uh, anyway, I'm messing with the brightness and contrast and I added a layer mask to the layer with a soft round brush and I just painted around the edges to sort of blend it into the skin tone. And it ended up actually working better than I thought. I'm not gonna lie. Cause when I first started doing this, I, I expected it to be a train wreck. And uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes it is a train wreck to be honest, but it worked really, really good. As you can see, it actually kind of looks like it's blending into his hand. Um, yeah, I got really lucky here. And then next, I just basically had to cut the shape out in the center so I can use it as a uh, as a clipping mask for the next image I'm about to download. And then I'm on the hunt for more photos again. <laughs> I had to find some sort of gear that would work inside of that shape. And man, it took me way longer than I would like to admit to find the right image, but I ended up finding it, of course. I mean, there's there's a happy ending here, trust me. Um, but yeah, no, it's I, I would say be patient with the uh, process of finding assets because you never know, you might find that image that just really like takes that design to the next level. Oh, and you know, don't be scared to experiment. Keep experimenting until you can't experiment anymore. Find those images, those different assets that you want to use, paste them into Photoshop, play with them, see what happens. If, if you hate it, delete it, right? That could be a, a thing. If you hate it, delete it. That could be a shirt. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm using the, what I actually thought I was going to do is use a clipping mask, but I ended up using a layer mask instead. And I just like held in, um, what was it, option on my keyboard, click and dragged it over to that new image layer that I just imported. And it copied the same exact layer mask. That's what I did there. And um, as you can see, it's not perfect. It needs a little bit of love, but uh, nonetheless, it still worked. And it also, it also needs to be desaturated because we're working with color still. Um, but it ended up blending way too good. 
Like, look at that. It looks pretty good already. Not bad. Needs a little love, like I said, but not bad. So if those were actually gears inside of his hand, that means there's shadows present, right? Because there's depth. So with that being said, I selected both layers, uh, the, the shape itself and the gears within those shapes, copying the same layer mask, like I said. That was a really bad way to explain it. Uh, I, I basically took both of those layers you see, layer uh, two and three, so one is the 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 vault shape that we imported earlier, and then the other one is the gears, and I, I basically made a group with them. And then I added a new layer above that group, which ended up being my shadow layer. At that point, I just painted some shadows in with black and a soft round brush, and uh, it worked effectively for this job. I just wanted to try to create some depth, at least fake it, so it doesn't look like it's just one dimensional. And for what it's worth, it may not be the best way to do things, but it worked and I'm happy with it. Um, and then I'm like, you know, sometimes I get in this like mood where I just want to overdo things. And that's what you see me doing quite often, actually, in my videos. Uh, sometimes I'll do things that are a little extreme and maybe I didn't need to go that crazy. But uh, I, I think that's where like the beauty of design is that you can make mistakes and go back. There's never like, oh, that's all you can do. You're done. You messed up. Bye bye. It's not like that at all. Uh, Photoshop's very forgiving in the sense that we can do Command Z, you know, and go back. Unless you're dumb like me and you set your uh, Command Z to only allow you to go back 10 times, which I did. Um, yeah, we don't have to go into the logic, but I guess I thought Photoshop would run smoother. Damn, was I wrong. On the text layer now, I'm just applying some layer styles and I'll zoom in to it so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I'm adding a bevel and emboss and on the style, you can see I'm using an inner bevel, chisel hard. You can copy these settings, but to be honest with you, your text, um, depending on the font you choose, will look slightly different. And then um, I'm adding a color overlay to bring some color into the uh, font itself. Um, I, you you could do this a few different ways. I like a uh, gradient overlay because it's pretty easy to get used to. Um, you can customize all the colors within the shadows, midtones, highlights, um, and in between. So it's just really a, a useful way of taking your your normal text and just really transforming it. So anyway, I'm messing with this for a little bit, and I ended up coming up with something that. I was decently happy with. Honestly, I did settle a little bit with this one. Um, and sometimes that's okay. You might come back to it later on and completely change it. But I ended up really liking it at the end. So uh, yeah, you could copy the settings like I said, but it will change with your design because your design might call for a different style. One big thing though is adding a stroke, an outside stroke with an outer glow because I'm gonna be doing some color separating later on with these different tones, mainly shadows, midtones, and highlights. And that outer glow really helps bring everything together. And um, yeah, it just, it's a big deal, trust me. Towards the end, you're gonna see what I'm saying. But uh, I'm just doing those small minor adjustments right now before I get back into the photos, uh, you know, editing those further. I'm kind of big on like matching the aesthetic uh, through and through, right? So if I have a stroke on the text, um, I'm not saying you have to do it to everything, but for this situation, I really thought it'd look cool if there was an outer stroke on the actual images themselves. Now all that's left to do is add a hue and saturation layer above the text layer and just lower the saturation all the way so it makes it black and white. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of at this point focusing on exposure and uh, kind of what I want to you know, be more important in the image. Obviously the top Gavin is more important than the bottom one in my opinion. So I didn't want that one to be too dark. Uh, I'm adding shadows to bring out depth because I don't want those front images to get lost, which ends up happening. We'll go over that soon. Um, I ended up having to make this image a couple different times, honestly, because the print wasn't turning out good. We'll go over that later. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, the, the images need contrast. If, if you go to print something that has low contrast, especially with DTG printing, it's not going to turn out good. So it's just something to be mindful of. Now, if we take a step back and look at the composition, you'll notice that the top right has a lot of empty room. So I ended up adding an ellipse and a blur to it so we can start kind of creating uh, an interesting look. Now, if you look at their album, The Art of Survival, they have this like moon. So I created that circle to kind of like represent the, the opposite of that, right? Which is like more of a sun. So 
if there's a moon there, then there's a sun here. So I'm just like, I'm just doing the opposite, basically. Now, you'd probably argue, why don't you just add a moon, Charlie? But I just thought a sun-type shape would look super cool, especially having different layers to it. So that's what I'm doing now. And this goes into the... Um, the bitmap effect that I'm going to be applying to this image, which is going to be separating the colors, that's going to look so much better. Um, right now, it definitely looks weird, but it does end up coming together later on, I promise. Oh, and obviously, I wanted to add something above that sun shape because it would look so weird just having that like big freaking sun dot right there, right? So what I ended up doing was finding this font um, that I liked. And I, I just basically typed out More Than Machines, which is the song title that I made this shirt from um, or based off of. And uh, I ended up adding this like skew to it and a stroke around it to kind of pop it out of the, the, the sun shape a little bit more. I'm just calling it the sun shape because that's pretty much what it is to me, especially once the color's added. Um, but yeah, with the text above it, I actually found that it brought everything together really nicely. And again, I'm, I'm relying on the texturing that I'm going to do and the, um, the halftone separations and all that stuff, because without that effect, it just looks really odd. And, uh, anyway, now you see me playing with the out outer glows of the actual, um, background image, we'll call it, which is the main machine image with the gears and everything that is the top Gavin. And that's the most important to me because I want that to really shine through, right? And it's not going to shine through without a little bit of separation from the background. And uh, the stroke and the outer glow really helped with that. And at this stage, it was basically about just putting the finishing touches. So I wanted to add the the title of their new album, which is The Art of Survival or Art of Survival. I think it, it actually is. I don't know if there's a done in front of it, to be honest. But uh, I put Art of Survival on the left side to sort of fill a little bit more space up. It didn't need it. You don't really need to do this but um, I end up adding more than I need to all the time. But I actually think it does add a little bit to it. And I like the fact that it's vertical and not horizontal. So that's a cool little touch that I did. And um, I mean, that left space was a little odd. And I felt like the only way to fill the background up more was to either add text or add a background element. And I didn't want to add a background element because it would be so messy. There would just be so much um, congestion in the design. So I avoided that just by, you know, using those text elements. This next part can be a little tricky to explain, so I'll do my best. So basically at this point, what I want to do is copy the entire design without the background. That way I can create something I call a base layer. And this is just a clean layer, solid colors. This layer can help me create things like clipping masks or layer masks or whatever. So now what I need to do is open up a new document with the exact same dimensions, which is 15 by 18, 300 DPI. This document is crucial because we're gonna use it to create bitmap patterns with different tones. And I don't wanna do that within my master document, which is the one I'm on right now. So that's the reason why I'm creating that second document. I'm gonna basically copy merged everything with the black background. That way I can just paste it into that second document and again, not have to worry about messing up any of my layers. The way it will work is you wanna go up to image, grayscale, then back to image, bitmap, and then 300 resolution for that. And once you enter that, you're just gonna choose halftone screen and you just wanna copy my settings and you can also mess with them. There's so many different settings you could try to achieve different results. But uh, these settings I found to work pretty well for this photo at first. I did end up changing it later on, but these were like a good baseline to start with. And I had some issues with it um, that I fixed later on as well. But I'm showing you guys this not to overwhelm you. I'm showing you this to show you that even I make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. Sometimes we just have to redo things in order to find a result that we're happy with. As you can see, I'm playing with the different frequencies. And honestly, I would keep that at actually 40 and the screen angle at 24. I think that's a good starting point. But uh, yeah, it, it works. You just have to experiment and don't get frustrated. One important thing is that you do need to make sure your document's set back to RGB. So you need to go up to image, mode, and then RGB before you copy it back over to your main document. And then I just use a magic wand to delete the background. It's pretty simple at that point. And then um, however you wanna keep track of your layers, you can group them, whatever you wanna do for each tone. So I'm gonna have like four or five different layers. And what I do to separate the different tones that you're about to see is I use levels. And the reason why is because levels has three easy sliders to remember. You have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And this allows you to really bring out 
each tone individually. The main thing with this though is you want to make sure you have enough contrast between between each tone. If there's not enough contrast, your separations will look super odd. And then I just press Command A and then Copy Merge. So you can actually go up to Edit, Copy Merge, or you could do Shift Command C. And then I go into the new document and press Shift Command V to paste in place. And then you do the same exact bitmap method I just used. You go up to you know go up to Image Mode, Grayscale Image Mode Bitmap. And then you just want to kind of copy my settings or try your own. And that's basically how I do it. And then at that point, I just delete the black background after unlocking the layer. And then I just paste it into my document. And I do that for every single tone. And if you guys really want a in-depth breakdown of this, I have an Instagram short on my, uh, I mean, on my Instagram that breaks it down in 60 seconds or we can even make a full length tutorial on this, let me know. And if you really wanna learn exactly how I do this, I do teach one-on-one -on -one lessons over at merchdesignacademy.com and we're accepting free consultations right now. So my team will meet with you, see if you're a good fit. I will say the one-on-one -on -one lessons are amazing, especially for beginners that wanna learn exactly how I do things. I go into greater detail than I do here on YouTube. That's the best way to just boost your career and get started immediately. Um, but yeah, anyway, besides that, um, you're going to see me messing with the, the level some more on the photo and you're going to see me basically like bringing all the levels over to the right more and more and more. And that's simply because we're moving our way towards the right to bring that contrast out, right? And also bring out the highlights more. So my goal is to just separate the tones and make sure there's a clear, um, you know, a clear separation there. So there's contrast. And if there's no contrast, the print's gonna look super odd. And that's the issue I had with my first print is there wasn't enough contrast. So uh, me and Aplique had to work with the art a little bit more. I had to you know, redo the separations later on in order to get better contrast. Um, my main issue was actually the highlight layer. There wasn't enough highlights and it was causing issues. So that's just something to be mindful of when you're using levels. Um, just make sure there is enough separation between the tones. Once I have the separations though, and they're transparent because obviously I use a magic wand to delete the background, right? So at that point, I just add a color overlay to each tone. Uh, each layer in order to like just kind of like figure out exactly what I'm going for, right? By adding those colors, you can really start to see the the separations pop and um, see what you actually did. So without the color, it just looks like the normal photo, but with the color, you can actually see the, the separation. So I would recommend experimenting with the color and seeing um, how they, uh, you know, how it changes when you change the colors up. Like, for example, when you change the mid-tone to red and you change the shadow to blue, what happens, you know? So experiment with that kind of stuff, um, which is what I do in order to get the final results. There's a ton of bitmap tutorials out there, so I would definitely recommend watching them. Just do your research, but we can also make a full tutorial. I've touched on this before, but I think it would help to make a full length tutorial. So let me know what you guys wanna do in the comment section below. But uh, now I'm just messing with a gradient map. What I did is I took all my separations, grouped them together, and then added a gradient map above it, clipped to that group, and now I'm just playing with the different um, colors with each tone. If you guys didn't know this, gradient maps also affect the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and everything in between. So um, that's how you can kind of manipulate the different tones. That's why you're, you know, you're seeing the different colors um, within the highlights, shadows, midtones, and all that good stuff, right? So that's just basically how it works. Um, it's good to know that. It's good to know how colors are um, actually affecting the image. So now what I wanna do is show you guys what it looks like when you actually try to print this with DTG printing and there's not enough contrast. This is my mistake, but I wanted to show you this so you don't make the same mistake. So as I was opening this, I honestly thought it was gonna turn out a lot better. Um, but when I saw it, I was a little shocked that it just looked really washed out and just, like I said, not a lot of contrast. And it's not the DTG printer's fault. Um, as a designer, it's kind of my job to see these issues and make changes. So yeah, I'm not gonna make excuses for it. It looks like dog shit, <laughs> actually. Um, so what I ended up doing was just redoing all the separations and making sure there's greater contrast. That way the images actually, you know, look like images and not just blotches. Um, and to do that, I just made sure there was a more dominant highlight layer. And as you can see, it turned out way better. It looks so much better. I go down these rabbit holes sometimes, right? I say that all the time, but it's true. And I didn't like the color after all, so I ended up making another one that I like to call Sunburst. I like orange, so I'm a little biased here, but I actually think this is the better version. What do you guys think? Let me know. 
Huge shout out to Applique for making me a better designer. And um, hopefully this helped you guys become better designers too. My name's Charlie with Merch Design Academy. I'll see you guys at merchdesignacademy.com. And hopefully I see some new students soon. If you guys want to learn, you know where to go. I'll see you in the next one.